This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Thank you for joining me again this week on the Killer Innovation Show. I'm your host, Phil McKinney. Over the years, I've noticed that I get the exact same or very similar set of questions after my talks, my workshops, after I teach boot camps, or even during uh, these talks when I open up the audience for Q&A. What this tells me is that there are a set of common questions that are in the minds of most people interested in innovation. There's kind of this mystique, mystery, wonderment around what's the magic behind innovation. So, this week's show, I'm going to go through the nine most common questions that I get. These are the ones that I hear repeatedly over and over and over again. Now, I'm doing it in the show in anticipation that one or more of these questions are the same ones you have rattling around in your head. Now, look, I've been in your shoes. You've been asked to take on maybe some innovation role. You're trying to build a team. You're trying to impress your boss on how innovative or creative you get but you are in absolute fear that you're going to get asked a question that you don't know the answer to. So this week's show, I'm hoping to be able to knock out the nine most common questions that I hear. And if you're an innovation leader, they are more than likely the most common questions you're going to hear from your leadership, from your team, from the innovation antibodies within your organization. So, Let's dive right in. First question, how do I define innovation? Yes, I get this question all the time. How do I define innovation? Like there's some magic to the definition. Now, I like to keep it simple. The way I define innovation is ideas that become real where someone is willing to exchange value to get it. Ideas that become real when someone is willing to exchange value or whatever that innovation is. It's not just about the ideas. Ideas are easy. I've got notebooks, I've got Tupperware containers sitting here in the studio full of idea notebooks that I have filled out over the years. Know what the value of those are? Zippo. Until you take an idea and make it real, that's where the value gets created. Now value also is what is willing willing someone to pay you for it or how they're willing to exchange value. You've got this really great idea. Maybe the value is a licensing to get to that idea. Maybe it's they're just gonna buy the product or service that your idea turns into. It's an idea that becomes real that someone is willing to exchange value for. That's all there is to it. Don't have to go through the, you know, all kinds of gyrations. Keep it simple. Ideas that become real. That's all innovation is. Now, the show's name is Killer Innovation. One of the most common questions I get is, what is a killer innovation? Now, I'll tell you, some people are really, really turned off by my use of the word killer. In fact, just in the last couple of weeks, someone posted over on Facebook, you know, each week we post the YouTube video and or audio of the show. So if you are big, if you're a YouTube rep subscriber or whatever, you can get the show now over there. And someone posted, I'm thinking it was on a Facebook post of the YouTube audio, if I recall correctly, over on the Killer Innovations page about really attacking me on this concept of killer, like it's, you know, guns and ammos and all those kinds of things. Now, when I, start, when I started the show 13 years ago, we're in season 14, we started the show 13 years ago. What I meant by the word killer, this is 2005, was that it was a, a really great innovation. It was a game-changing innovation. It was a disruptive innovation. It was the innovation. Back, you know, in the, the late, late 1990s, early 2000s, people were using the word killer to mean, oh man, that's a killer app, um, which meant that that was the best the best app. And so therefore I named the show Killer Innovations. Now, again, even to this day, people get hung up on the word killer. Now, 
what is the definition? What's the definition that I've stood by the entire 13 years of the show? And what is it I mean by a killer innovation? What I mean by a killer innovation is an innovation that is a significant and highly profitable departure from what current offerings or practices that would be difficult to duplicate. So an innovation, a killer innovation, that is a significant and highly profitable departure from current offerings or practices, things that are commonly in the market, and, important and, that would be difficult to duplicate. So you're doing something that's different from what's in the marketplace. You create value where people will give you more value for it, and there's a barrier to entry. That is the definition of a killer innovation. Nothing more, nothing less. Different, high value, with a barrier to entry. That is a killer innovation. Doesn't mean it's going to be a billion dollar business. It's not going to be a hundred billion dollar business. It's not the new Facebook, you know, those kinds of things. In this case, it is just simply a radical departure that's highly profitable that is difficult to duplicate. You've created some barrier, some uniqueness, something that's going to be hard for someone else just to immediately come in and coattail off of you. The next question I usually get after that is, oh, okay, so uh, incremental innovation is of no value. No. There are multiple types of innovation. Incremental being one of them. An incremental innovation is when you build on top of an existing innovation with something new and unique. So you have an existing product, you enhance it, you add some level of innovation to it, and that's an incremental innovation. Uh, one example that's uh, in the automotive industry today is take Ford. The Ford F-150 pickup truck's been along for a long time. An incremental innovation, now I would call it incremental, Ford might be offended, may not refer to it as incremental, was going to an all aluminum frame in the Ford F-150. Made it much lighter, better gas mileage, all kinds of benefits for it. I would view that as an incremental. It's an existing product, been out there for quite some time, and that incremental innovation that creates incremental value to the base product, in this case, a Ford F-150 pickup truck, the most popular truck in, the, in North America, now being made with an aluminum frame. So that's an example of incremental. Now, incremental innovations can be uh, highly valuable since most organizations depend on these incremental innovations to pay the rent while that next disruptive innovation is being worked on. Look, in most cases, if you look back, even for highly innovative organizations, more than 90% of the revenue is going to come from existing products and services, which require constant flow of incremental innovations. About 10% of the revenue comes from something that is totally disruptive, way out there, just totally um, changes and transforms that market. So if 90% of your revenue is from your existing product line, there's a huge amount of value for incremental innovations. Now, in the innovation game, people will get into, oh, those things that are the most valuable are those breakthroughs, disruptives, killer innovations. Those are the things that everybody should go for. Now, it's like getting on in baseball, getting up to home plate, and all you're looking for is bases loaded grand slams. They're very rare, very hard to do, and you will lose all of your games versus hitting singles, doubles, triples, a home run every once in a while. That's how you win games. The same thing is in the innovation game. It's not about, yes, you, you want to get that grand slam every once in a while, but in, quite honestly, totally disruptive, radically new things are rare, extremely rare. But to win, incremental innovation is the way you add innovation value to what it is you do today, whether that's improving call center efficiency or, you know, reduce shipping time or improve accuracy in the processes. Those are all incremental innovations, huge value. 
So hopefully this clarified my definition of innovation. What is a killer innovation? And dispel this concept that incremental innovations are of no value. That is not the case. Incremental innovations are of huge, significant value to most and all organizations that are out there. So don't overlook those incremental innovations and how you can add value in typically areas that you don't even think about, whether it be processes or finance or HR or shipping or manufacturing. There's a lot of areas for incremental innovations and those add up pretty darn quick. So don't go anywhere, we're gonna be right back. We're gonna continue on with the nine most common questions about innovation that I get and we'll be right back. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Before we jump back into the show, I want to do do a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, which is Zoom. Zoom has been developed and is delivering just an absolute game changer when it comes to video collaboration, video conferencing, communication collaboration tools. Zoom has just been a game changer for me. I use it every day, have for a couple of years. Uh, Zoom has been a longtime sponsor. They started off allowing us to use Zoom here in the studio to bring guests in. Now Zoom is actually a financial sponsor. Through their financial support, we're actually able to give more money to the charities that we sponsor, which includes Hacking Autism and Pioneer Education Africa. So go on out, try it. Trust me, you'll love it. If you are using Zoom, let Zoom know about where you heard it, about this show. It's important for our sponsors to hear from our fans and listeners about how they heard about the the, the technologies and tools and sponsorships that we make available. Zoom has partnered with us. They've made a free account available. You can check it out. It'll allow you to collaborate with 50 uh, people, five zero people. So check it out, killerinnovations.com slash Zoom and get your free account now. So let's continue on with the nine most common questions about innovation that I get when I'm out there talking, doing my workshops, et cetera. So next question, why is innovation so difficult? There's kind of this thing that, oh, I can just do it. There's a 10 step process. There's a magic formula. There's a, some app that I can download and magic happens. <laughs> it, Cause it's not just about the idea. There are a lot of pieces that must come together to turn an idea into a game-changing killer innovation or even just an incremental innovation. And most of these things you are not in control of. Trust me, it looks easy. If you look at products that you just love and passionate about, whether it's a a new mobile app, some new social media platform, some new uh, shiny uh, electronic device that you're carrying in your pocket, Though it may look easy because you're looking at the end results, you're not understanding everything that comes behind it. So when I give the answer to this question, the next question I get right away is, so what are some of these things you cannot control? Innovation's difficult. You're not in control of everything. So what are some of these things you can't control? One, and this is one I'm still working on, which is timing. You may have the best idea, but if the market's not ready, if the technology is not ready, you need you know next another generation of silicon, government regulations are not ready because they hadn't predict this kind of product or service, you are stuck. Look, Steve Jobs and Apple did not invent the smartphone. You could argue whether it was Nokia or Palm that invented the smartphone, but it was not Steve Jobs and Apple. Steve and Apple just got the timing right. They waited for another couple iterations of silicon, get the next generation of processors, next generation of some software capabilities, but the fundamental of the original iPhone was a smartphone that had already existed across the board for many, many years. It was about patience and getting that timing right. Now, a saying that I repeat often to teams who are frustrated in the slow traction of the innovation, they've done something, 
They're, they've launched it. They're not getting the response they're anticipated. They're not getting you know, 10 million downloads for their app. And then they call me to ask for advice. Right? The difference between a good idea and a great idea is rarely the idea. It's most likely the timing. Getting the timing right. Now, the flip side of this and the question I get is, okay, innovation is difficult. There's a lot of things I cannot control that will impact it. What are some of the things that I can control around turning my idea into an innovation? The number one piece of advice I will give you on what you can control is your team. Innovation is a team sport. Who you hire, who you allow to be on your team will be the most important decision you make. Now, what do I look for? I look for two things, passion and culture. What I mean by culture is they are, are they aligned with my culture? Cornerstone, you can go to anybody on my team today, any of my you know, staff, any people that I've worked with in the past and ask them what I call my cornerstone culture, and that is honesty and integrity. If you dance up against the line and play it a little loose, you're not going to survive on my team. So what I look for is passion, energy, love, just the energy of, gosh, we're gonna, this is going to change the world. We're going we're gonna to make this happen. Love for what it is you do. And then the culture match. I can teach the technical skills. It's, in fact, passion and culture more important than technical skills. I can tell, teach, mentor the skills. If you're a jerk, there's no room on my team for you. Now, when it comes to hiring, I've not always done this very well. I've hired people because of credentials or reputation or you know, somebody I know and trust referred them, and I didn't really look at it hard. In those cases, I look back, and I've paid dearly for that. Paid dearly. Team is the most important thing you can control and is the thing that will have the most positive impact on your ultimate success. And again, I look for that passion, and I look for that culture mix. Not about you got to have the basic skills. If I'm hiring a marketing person, they better know marketing. If I'm hiring a finance person, they better know finance, right? But for me, it is about, I assume they've got the core capabilities, passion, and culture match. In fact, today, in my current role as a CEO, and I repeat this over and over and over again, we hire to the culture. They don't match the culture, we bounce them out. Even though they've got unbelievable technical skills, they don't match the culture, they don't, make it, they don't pass through the interview process. Because you let one bad apple in, it will poison the team, and you will cut your innovation capabilities in half, if not more, by just having one person get onto your team that isn't a match to what it is you're trying to achieve. So the one thing you can control, and you control it completely, is who do you hire, who do you let onto your team. You can't control timing, you can't control a lot of things, but you can control the team. Hire the right people. And yes, there can be a pressure to hurry up and hire because you got to get something done in a certain amount of time. Don't get persuaded to compromise. I've learned this over all my years. My one piece of advice, the thing you control, is the Team. So, we're going to continue on in our conversation on these most nine most common questions about innovation. I'm sure one of these are ones that you've got rattling around in your head, but if you have other ones that you would like for me to answer in the future, drop me a note at phil at killerinnovations.com and we'll collect those up for a future show. But we're going to continue on. We've only gone through six. We've got three more to go, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Innovations on the Disc Talk Radio Network.
This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Before we jump back into the show, I just want to do a quick shout out to one of our new sponsors, which is HP. HP it manufactures everything from PCs, workstations, uh, laptops, desktops, displays, printers, all the products and technologies that allow you as a business owner, as an innovator, as a creative to do the work you do each and every day. Now, HP has been gracious to providing us new technologies for our studio. If you're interested in seeing what we have actually here in the studio that HP is providing, you can go over to killerinnovations.com slash HP. But go check out some of their new things. I'm a proud owner of a new Elite Book 360, a commercial laptop, ultra thin, ultra light. Carried it to New Zealand and Australia and Japan. I've had it with me in Europe. I use it each and every day and just absolutely love it. Um, great power, nice and thin, perfect product for what I need it for. But go check it out. Another area that HP is focusing in on here most recently that I am really happy about is around security and privacy. So check out their work in security and privacy, securing that laptop, securing your personal information, your family information, your children. Check it out. HP is doing some great stuff. Again, go over to killinnovations.com slash HP. So continue our conversation on the most common questions about innovation that I get when I'm out talking, speaking, doing workshops. This is one that I get when I'm typically speaking to, you know, chief innovation officers at conferences and that is, what is the one of the biggest mistakes most organization makes when it comes to innovation? What is the one of, what is the biggest mistake most organizations make when it comes to innovation. And this one's an easy for me. It's one I've seen all the time. It's the one I've lived. And that is they have a culture of failure not being allowed. They create a culture where failure is not allowed by the organization. Now, innovation is all about failure. If you aren't failing, you are not innovating. And best-in-class teams and organizations have a 90% failure rate. Now, if your failure rate's less than 90, then you aren't stretching. You're just trying, not trying hard enough. You're making the safe bet. If you are above 90%, then take a look at how you're selecting and managing your ideas. 90% is kind of that optimal part of the curve for most organizations. And the challenge being is, is that these organizations that have this failure and don't understand how failure is actually a positive, actually destroy any attempt from people within their team to innovate. Now, is that, are you doomed if you're part of an organization? Well, that kind of weaves into the next question I get. How can an organization get over their fear of failure? How do you get an organization to change? If an organization is where failure is not allowed, you are not allowed to fail, perfection is the, is the metric for success and that's how you get promoted. How does an organization get over their fear of failure? By celebrating failure. When someone tries something and it doesn't work out, celebrate it, pat them on the back, woohoo, you gave it a good try. By rewarding failure. Now. When I got to HP and took over in the CTO role and we were forming what, was, what is still called the Innovation Program Office or IPO, in the Innovation Program Office, we purposely put together a reward systems where we celebrated and rewarded failures. Now anybody across anywhere in HP could come up with an idea and if the idea got selected, then they temporarily got moved into the innovation program office and they received funding and staffing and engineering support to take their idea and turn it into a real product. Now, we may get that product, may build a prototype, we may take it out in the market, try it out, and for whatever reason, it didn't get, doesn't move forward. Well, guess what? We throw a heck of a party and we pay bonuses. We paid bonuses to the teams to reward them, for trying, for trying, for getting out there and just taking a swing at the plate, trying to get uh, that idea uh, to be successful. Not every idea is going to work, but we recognized them, we rewarded them. In some cases, we actually give promotions. 
we just recently did that within uh, the organization I'm with now, where we had a project. It didn't work out, but the leadership team that drove that team was phenomenal. The, the project didn't move forward, didn't get, uh, did, is not going to go to commercialization. But guess what? The leader got promoted to a VP, which kind of blows everybody's mind. Like, whoa, 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 they work on a project. The project didn't go forward, and you promoted them. Explain this to me. It's about rewarding the, the, the effort, rewarding the attempt, rewarding people that take and try to do something that is incredibly hard to do. Now, warning, if an organization has a history of punishing failure, you tried, you failed, you got demoted, you failed, you get fired, you get whatever, then changing the culture will be very, very hard and possibly impossible if the most senior people are not a thousand percent on board. Okay. I'm going to say this again. If an organization has a history of punishing failure, then changing that culture is going to be very, very hard. And it could be impossible. And you got to be honest. If the CEO, the board, 100% of the top execs, if they're not a thousand percent on board, then trying to change the culture, or you maybe trying to change the culture, lowering the organization, get ready. That's, you're going in for the long haul. Another question I get is, okay, I get the failure thing. Everybody talks about that. What is another mistake most organizations make? So if failure is the, the most common mistake organizations make, what's number two? Number two is not being patient. Now, I've said this many times. Innovation is hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Innovation is hard. And as a result, it's hard to predict when a breakthrough will occur. It'll be, it's difficult to predict when the answer to a sticking point that allows an innovation to become real. When is that going to happen? You can't say, okay, Thursday at 3 o'clock, we're going to solve this really challenging you know, problem that we've been working on for the last two months. You don't know that. Now, what I've found is no matter how good you think you are at predicting and managing projects, when it comes to innovation, it takes longer than you think. Yet, most senior executives lose patience after about a year to 18 months. They want to see progress. This is where this law of 18 comes in. Law of 18 says that any senior executive can fund an innovation project for about 18 months, but if they don't see a deliverable, they don't see an impact, they don't see progress in the 18 months, then they lose interest. The project more than likely will lose funding and the project will not go forward. So when the law of 18 kicks in, then they kill a project. And then sometime later, someone else takes the idea and turns it into a major market disruption, like the iPhone. Nokia, Palm, others had invented the smartphone, but they invented it when you couldn't make it thin. You when you couldn't do as much sophistication in the software because the processor wasn't that good. When wireless broadband speeds were less because you didn't have uh, 4G kinds of megabit speeds. So you had lower processor, lower resolution, low sof less software capabilities because of CPU, and slower internet speeds. But you had a smartphone, right? In the law of 18, with all those companies or their parent companies who acquired them, they got tired of waiting and they killed those projects off or didn't really put the emphasis behind them. In this case, Steve Jobs and Apple and the team, I think it was six or seven that were part of the iPhone team, which included Andy Grignon, who's a friend of mine who uh, joined me at HP after we acquired Palm. Um, they kill it. They lose interest. And then all of a sudden, the win a winning product that totally disrupts the market takes off, in this case, the iPhone. So the most common mistake, failure. Second most common mistake is the lack of patience. And innovation takes patience. It takes time. It takes time to invent. You can't schedule it. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a show talking about daydreaming. 
in the role of just being able to have time to think and does two hours a week not doing anything just thinking does that improve the quality of your ideas so go back and listen to that show check that out but again being patient one that we commonly overlook and executives chalk it up to uh, being frugal and prudent and those types of things. So, so we've covered nine questions. I've got a secret bonus question right into the beginning of the next segment, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to Kill Innovations. This is Killer Innovations, a show about ideas, creativity, and how you can innovate. Welcome to the Innovator's Garage, where you learn to create your next game-changing killer innovation. Welcome back. So we've covered the nine most common questions that I get when I'm out there doing my workshops, my teaching boot camp, um, giving talks, lectures, coaching, mentoring, etc. But I've got a bonus question that I get. And the bonus question is, who are the best people to be innovators? Is there a certain type, you know, are they, you know, certain backgrounds, certain degrees, who are the best people to be innovators? Basically, people are asking, who should I go off and look to hire? Now, I want to dispel that there's some categorization. Look, everyone is an innovator. It doesn't matter the role, the function, the education, the background, the skills, what gender you are, um, what companies you've worked for, um, what school you went to, it doesn't matter. Innovation is a skill that you can learn, you can practice, and you can become proficient at. Now, you're gonna point to people within your organization or people you know, and you're gonna say, whoa, whoa, some will be better at it than others. Right. You know, Joe over there in R&D is really good at it or, um, you know, Sue over in in design and graphics. She's really, really creative. But the real reason why they are so good at it is because they work at it. They practice it. Not about, you know, you got some special gift bestowed upon you. For them to get the skill they have that you recognize, they work really, really hard at it. And what's the saying now? 8,000 or 10,000 hours of practice to really become proficient? They work at it. They exercise their creative muscle every day. So here's my question to you. Do you exercise your creative muscle every day? If not, then don't sit back and complain because someone else is more creative and they got some special gift and you didn't get it or they get the boss's attention for their ideas. This is something that is in your control. Now, I've done all some exercises that I do. I've talked about them in the past. Um, I'm going to put a link in the show notes so that you can try them yourself. Exercise your creative muscle every day. Put the time in. You're not going to have a six-pack stomach. You're not going to run a marathon. You're not going to, you know, sum it out on Everest if you don't practice. Same thing happens in your creativity, your innovation skills. You got to work at it. Now, I'm going to, like I said, I'll put the link in the show notes. So hop on over to killerinnovations.com and I'll have a link to the show where I talk about uh, the creative muscle exercises, the things I do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly to keep my creative muscles tuned up. You can do the same thing. You can be as good at it as I am or as anybody else I know, but you got to put the hours in. You can't sit back and be a couch potato and then expect to be highly creative. So what do you think of the questions? Did you have one or two of these questions rattling around in your head? If not you, I'm guessing you know someone who has these questions, but they're afraid to ask. Maybe it's somebody on your team. Maybe it's your boss who's picked up responsibilities for innovation. Now, typically when we're afraid to ask, we have this fear of sounding crazy or out of touch, given that everybody's talking about innovation. But 
What's the definition of innovation? That's probably the most common question I get. If you have someone in mind that maybe has these questions and doesn't have the answers or you think this might help them, how about sharing this audio file with the questions and answers with them? You know, just send them the link and say, hey, check this out. One, it would help get people to be aware of the show, but I, hopefully this content is helpful to you and you will know somebody else that it will also be helpful to. With someone listening, particularly to today's show, it may just help you convince one more person that they can play an important role in creating that next breakthrough innovation, convincing somebody that yes, they can be creative. Now, I really do appreciate that. Thanks for being part of the show this week. I look forward to spending this time with you. We put a lot of time into the content. I spent a lot of time creating the content and the shows each and every week for the last 13 years. And uh, I do appreciate you taking the time to spend it with us today. So do you want to hang out? If you do, then join me over at the innovators.community. The innovators.community is a private Slack channel where I hang out every day with other creators and innovators from around the world. You don't need to be some big title, chief innovation. It's Everything from startups to individuals to people who recognize that they, they want to improve their skills. So check it out, the innovators.community. And since you're listening to the show, you're obviously interested in innovation, creativity, and design. So join. Again, just go over to the innovators.community and you'll find out all the information about the Slack channel and what it takes to, uh, to join. Now, it looks like I need to wrap this up. We're running out of time here. Um, so I'm going to kind of cut my ending here down a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions or topics you would like for me to cover in future shows, always looking for topic ideas, always looking for questions that I can answer as part of the show, drop me a note over at phil at killerinnovations.com. Now, they come directly to me. There's no filtering. There's nobody reading them and summarizing them. You're not going to get a robot response. That email comes directly to my inbox. So it's phil at killerinnovations.com. And then, you know, I can reply to it. But again, what I'm really looking for is ideas on, you know, content, questions you want to answer, suggestions for guests, uh, whatever would make this show more useful for you. Maybe you have an idea for a series that we can run uh, here on the show where it's a whole multi-week series. We're open to all kinds of ideas. And look, we've been doing content for 13, 14 years. It gets... Um, a little challenging. We want to make sure we stay connected with what you find valuable. So again, drop me a note over at phil at killerinnovations.com. And again, my one ask is let other people know about the show. Help me pay it forward. I do this show to pay it forward. Help me pay it forward by, by sharing this show with, with others. Now here's my challenge for you today. Now go out and exercise that creative muscle every day this week. Do not let the innovation and everybody's get you down. Don't let the critics who tell you your idea is stupid, crazy, won't work. Don't let them get you down. Go out and change the world. The world needs us innovators to solve the challenges that we have. So with that, look forward to talking to you next week. And uh, we'll be right here. And uh, let me know how I can help. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.